Nectar Cannabis. Low prices, high you. Hello. Ben Dirksen, everybody. Yeah. You can clap. You, you better. You better if you know what's good for you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You are one of, um, I think there's as many Wu-Tang Clan members as there are mayoral candidates. You are one of the chambers. You're looking to take over all of the chambers uh, of Portland. It's very exciting. You're the youngest candidate, obviously. Probably people are, people are, are you know, that, that's a, a focal point. Uh, I would say best hair in the game, without a, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. What made you decide to run for mayor of Portland, Bim? I, uh, I wanted to give a voice to the cultural identity of Portland. I think that when, when cities grow, and especially when they grow as fast as Portland is growing, something really terrible happens, and, and the identity of that city gets sold to the highest bidder of big interest and special interest. And that happens in a few different ways, and one of the most important and insidious ways that it happens is through campaign finance of local campaigns. And we're seeing it in this election cycle in a huge way. We're seeing a lead candidate taking a half a million dollars from special interests that are interested in taking the benefit that we earned and basically pulling that money, the the billions of dollars that Portland will generate in the coming years out of Portland into the large companies and special interests that finance big campaigns of career politicians. So why I'm running is to give a voice to Portland. People want a voice and their voice sounds like yeah, woo! I like that voice. The kind of voice I dig. <clears throat> when you were a young Bim, baby Bim, did you did baby Bim think big daddy Bim would run for mayor, would be in politics? No, uh, baby Bim didn't really think it would be necessary, but it's become necessary to, to step up as a community in Portland. It's become necessary for everyday people to realize that it's their place that they're protecting, and there's a responsibility for them to stand up and, and speak to what's important to them. Well, one of the things I've always lauded you for is your leadership. Uh, I've always appreciated that about you. Uh, you're a leader in your own band. You're a leader in the music scene in this town. You get bands together. I mean, I basically can thank you for our musical guest lineup. You have a basketball tournament called Riggs Get Ball. Bands come and play. I got to play with uh, my, our, our show's staff, and that snowball meant all these bands that we connected to. It's so much greater. The, the, the games or the winning meant nothing compared to what we got to experience musically. So you've given that to us. You, you do the Red Bull Sound Select shows. You've had your own business since you were preteen. Yeah, it was nine. I, I've had my own business for 15 years. I love you break every uh, uh, stereotype Yeah. Uh, across the board. You're <laughs> driven. I asked you one day. You, how many shows do you go to a year? I probably see a thousand bands play live each year. Thousand bands a year, ladies and gentlemen. And I said, so you must, the routine must be like party all night, sleep all day. And you said, no, not at all. Uh, I, I wake up quite early considering that I'm out at shows until one or two in the morning on most nights. But that's beside the point. I think that the, the thing about community in Portland is that it for a long time has been in a, a situation where it's been allowed to do things without the need to have a city step in and, and create protections and that's the change that we're seeing now is that in the future I won't be able to go and see those bands because we have to protect the small venues where those bands, those bands play and we have to protect the rights of those musicians to play music in their own home without getting shut down by the city for a noise ordinance complaint. We have to do a lot of things now that in the last 20, 30 years we didn't have to do to protect these communities in Portland and that's sort of why it's important that I've been going to these shows is because I understand that a small thing like the noise ordinance that we have right now in Portland can really crush these communities that for a long time didn't need our support and now do because we're growing so quickly and the, the spaces where they exist will disappear if the city doesn't take steps to ensure that our culture and our communities have longevity even when we build denser and when we grow in the ways that we're going to. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving them a voice. 
<laughs> and can I say, uh, comedians in their venues uh, want a voice too. Same places, man. Yeah, and man. It's the same I mean, we thing. love this this you know dimly lit, open flamed. Uh, Hell yeah! Badass might step in a turd rock venue. I love it. I've been playing here a long time, and we would be ashamed to lose something like this. To lose the real uh, dirt of Portland, which I think is really important. Yeah, Portland's got teeth, and that's cool, man. I'm for that. Like, I think we that's need what a fucking a dentist then. Yeah, we, yeah. Dentists. Uh, stand for the dentists and the musicians of Portland. Uh, we we need you for our teeth.